What up, y'all? It's your boy, Mr. Downtown Ray Mel, and you're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Wednesday, April 25th, 2018, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mello, that's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O, on Twitter at the Enter Report, or on Instagram at the Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio, just go to iHeartRadio. Dot com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. The Supreme Court of Pennsylvania overruled Judge Janice Brinkley on Tuesday, paving the way for rapper Meek Mill's release from prison. Mill's attorney Joe Tacopina told TMZ Meek was unjustly convicted and should not have spent a single day in jail. Meek is excited to be reunited with his family, and we, along with Meek, intend to continue to shine the light on the justice system in need of reform to prevent any other citizen from being put through what Meek has endured. The 30-year-old Philadelphia-born rapper, birthday Robert Williams, was sentenced in November to two to four years in state prison for violating his probation in a 2008 gun-related charge when he was 18 years old. Mill was accused of violating his probation by getting into an altercation at a St. Louis airport with a photo-seeking airport employee and then for driving recklessly in New York City. Although the charges in both cases were dropped, the arrests alone were enough to qualify as probation violations and Brinkley ordered the rapper to spend time behind bars. Brinkley told Mill last year, I gave you break after break and you basically just thumb your nose at this court. Mick Mill tweeted, I'd like to thank God, my family, and all my public advocates for their love, support, and encouragement during this difficult time. While the past five months have been a nightmare, the prayers, visits, calls, letters, and rallies have helped me stay positive. He also said, I plan to work closely with my legal team to overturn this unwarranted conviction and look forward to reuniting with my family and resuming my music career. Takopina condemned Brinkley's sentence as overly harsh. He noted the prosecutor in the case and Mill's probation officer recommended no jail time as the two violations were for arrests dealing with minor incidents and those charges were dropped. But instead of following the recommendations of the prosecutor and probation officer, Brinkley um, excarated both of them, challenged their credibility, and overrode both law enforcement agency recommendations and went from zero to two to four years, which showed that she clearly had a personal vendetta against Mill. Uh, Philadelphia 76ers co-owner Michael Rubin picked up Meek Mill from jail. The rapper was expected to attend Tuesday's game against the Miami Heat before a scheduled news conference. Tom Hardy becomes Marvel's anti-hero Venom in the latest trailer for the upcoming film based on the Spider-Man character. The clip released Monday during the CinemaCon convention in Las Vegas features Hardy as reporter Eddie Brock, who is investigating Dr. Carlton Drake, played by Riz Ahmed, because he is conducting scientific experiments on people using a black alien substance known as a symbiote. The symbiote, with a mind of its own, joins with Hardy and gives the journalist extraordinary powers, including the use of powerful tentacles and super Super strength. Uh, the symbiotic says after completing taking over Hardy's body to unveil the character's signature comic book look, including sharp teeth and a long tongue, we are Venom. Venom from director Ruben Fletcher is set to arrive in theaters on October 5th. Michelle Williams, Woody Harrelson, and Jenny Slate are also starring. Hardy said at CinemaCon, being part of this movie is a dream come true. He's one of my favorite characters as well. Sam Rockwell has been cast in the next film from director Tika Watiti, a World War II film titled Jojo Rabbit that stars Scarlett Johansson. Jojo Rabbit will follow a young German boy in Hitler's army who finds out that his mother, played by Johansson, is hiding a Jewish girl inside their home. Rockwell will appear in the film as a Nazi captain who runs a Hitler youth camp, noted the Hollywood Reporter. Watiti, who recently held Marvel's Thor Ragnarok, will also be starring as Adolf Hitler, who is the boy's imaginary friend. Watiti, who has also directed Hunt for the Wilder People and What to Do in the Shadows, wrote the script for Jojo Rabbit and is producing alongside Carthra Neal and Chelsea Weinstanley. Uh, production on the film is expected to star in the spring variety reported. Rockwell, who was last seen in three billboards outside Ebbing, uh, Missouri, which earned him the Oscar for Best Supporting Actor, will also star as President George W. Bush in Adam McKay's untitled biopic about former Vice President Dick Cheney starring Christian Bale. 
Key dates have been set for the 2019 Oscars. The Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Science announced in a press release Monday that the 91st Academy Awards will take place February 24th at the Dolby Theater in Hollywood. The award show will air live on ABC. The Academy's award season will kick off November 18th with the Governor's Awards nomination. Voting will run from January 7th to the 14th with the nominations to be announced on January 22nd. Actor Bruce Campbell announced he is retiring from his iconic role of demon hunter Ash Williams. The 59-year-old actor wrote in a Facebook post Monday, I bid you a heartfelt farewell playing Ash, the character I took acting lessons with for 39 years. Campbell wrote, I am hereby retiring from that portrayal. It's time. I follow Ash from his formative years through his midlife crisis and decline. What a thrill. What a privilege. We had a great resurgence with the help of stars. They made it possible for 15 more hours of evil deadness in your life the equivalent of 10 more features is ash dead never ash is as much a concept as a person where there is evil in this world there must be one to counter man or woman it matters not thanks for watching stars canceled ash versus evil dead last week after three seasons and campbell's message will likely quash fans hopes that the horror comedy series might find a new home on another network or be followed up by a fourth film Campbell previously played Ash in three Evil Dead movies dating back to 1981. Amazon said Tuesday it has ordered a second season of Tom Clancy's Jack Ryan, starring and produced by John Krasinski. The global thriller will get its season one premiere on Amazon Prime Video August 31st, and filming on season two is to take place this summer in Europe, South America, and the United States, the streaming service said in a news release. Jennifer Salk, the head of Amazon Studios, said in a statement, with so much early anticipation for Tom Clancy's Jack Ryan from our customers and personally having the pleasure to preview the exhilarating action pack for First season. We're excited to greenlit a second season of the series months ahead of its debut. Krasinski is best known for starring in the television comedy The Office and for acting, directing, and co-writing the horror film A Quiet Place. CIA age Jack Ryan has been previously played by Chris Pine, Ben Affleck, Alec Baldwin, and Harrison Ford in screen adaptations of Clancy's popular spy novels. Disney Channel says Tuesday will air the first two episodes of its new cartoon, Big Hero 6, the series, on June 9th and 10th. Following the premiere weekend, fresh episodes will debut Saturdays through September. Most of the show's characters will be voiced by the same actors who worked on the 2014 animated blockbuster Big Hero 6. Returning from the movie, which was about a team of student scientists who battle evildoers to save the, their city of San Francisco, Tokyo, our Maya Rudolph is on cast, Ryan Potter as Hero, Scott Asset as Baymax, Jamie Chung as Gogo, Genesis Rodriguez as Honey Lemon, and Stan Lee as Fred's dad. Uh, Karen Payton will replace Damon Wayans Jr. as Wasabi, and Brooks Whelan will take over T.J. Miller's role of Fred in the series. Rob Kardashian gave fans a glimpse of his daughter's tea party Monday. The 31-year-old television personality posted back-to-back -back pictures of Dream, his 17-month-old daughter with ex fiance Black China on Twitter. Dream uh, wears a gray onesie and a pink gingham apron in the first photo, which shows her laughing with her tea set in front of her. Kardashian captioned the post, Morning starts with a tea party. The second picture shows Dream sitting in a fuzzy blue chair. The toddler wears a pink shirt and a tutu with her hair pulled back. Uh, Kardashian wrote, then a little bit later, another tea party, LOL, I'm dying how my baby looks like two completely different girls in a matter of minutes, LOL, love you, Dream. Uh, people reported in March that Kardashian is focusing on Dream and his health. A source says Rob is eating better and has a trainer. He wants to stay healthy for his daughter's sake. He, uh, another insider added, he's focusing on what he should be focused on, Dream and his health. He wants to stay healthy for his daughter's sake. Dream was a huge wake-up call for Rob. He wants to be the best dad possible. And Kim Kardashian shared a new, brand new photo of her party of five on Monday. 37-year-old television personality posted a cute picture with husband Kanye West, 4-year-old daughter Northwest, 2-year-old son St. West, and 3-month-old daughter Chicago West on Instagram. The snapshot shows Kardashian striking a pose with North and St. aboard a private plane. Kanye is all smiles as he's holding baby Chicago on his lap. Kardashian captioned the photo, Party of Five. The Keeping Up with the Kardashian star has shared a first picture of her family of five earlier this month. She told the fans at the time, I don't think you really understand how hard it is to take a good family pic. 
This was all we got before all three kids started crying. I think I cried too. Kardashian welcomed to Chicago via a gestational carrier in January. She discussed the possibility of having more kids in the April issue of Ellie, saying four children would be her max. The star shared, my home and my heart feels right full right now in the best way. She says, I don't think I can handle more than four. My time is spread really thin, and I think it's important that in all couples, the mom gives the husband as much attention as the kids. Antonio Banderas says he'll love ex-wife Melanie Griffin until the day he dies. The 57-year-old actor voiced his love for Griffin in an interview with People, published Monday nearly four years after his split from the 60-year-old actress. He told the magazine, even if we are divorced, she is my family and I will love her until the day I die. We have been in contact all these years and we've managed to do a separation that is very elegant. Banderas and Griffin announced their split in June 2014 after 18 years of marriage. The couple shared daughter Stella Banderas and Griffin is also mom to, Ale- to son Alexander Bauer and daughter Dakota Johnson. Banderas says the kids appreciate their friendly relationship. He says our kids are enjoying that and that is very important for both of us. Our kids are priority number one. Banderas started dating Nicole Kimball following his divorce from Griffin. He shared a photo with the Dutch financial consultant Sunday on Instagram. Star captioned the picture back in hashtag London. Sunday walk at Nikki Kim 2807. Hashtag perfect day. Hashtag happy Sunday. Hashtag relax. Hashtag Thames. Hashtag Earth Day. Banderas will next star in the National Geographic Channel miniseries Genius Picasso, which debuted Tuesday. He told UPI, playing p- painter Pablo Picasso in the series was somewhat a painful experience. Psych alum Hill and the West Wing fame uh, has married Ballers actress Jasmine Simon, uh, Simon, the actor, confirmed on Instagram. Hill said Monday, alongside a wedding photo of himself and Simon inside a luxurious dining hall, if I could speak all the languages of all the lands throughout the world, I would, I would not be able to find the words to express the fullness of my love for you at Jasmine Simon. Hashtag Simon says Hill. No. Hashtag Simon says Hill. Uh, Hill and Simon announced their engagement in April 2017. Hill popped the question on a hot air balloon ride. The couple first met on the set of Ballers. Sim- uh, Simon previously said of their first meeting, I saw him, just me and him at the end of the table, and I was like, oh, I know you, you're dual. And I went and we exchanged numbers and the rest is history. Clay Crawford said in an Instagram post Tuesday he is grateful for his job on the Fox series Lethal Weapon and hosts fans, quote, will stick with me and stick with the show. The actor's message came in the wake of a Deadline.com report that the, said that the show was in danger of cancellation or Crawford might be replaced on it due to alleged unprofessional behavior he demonstrated on the show's set. The network has not publicly commented on the matter. Crawford described the media report as, quote, incredibly distressing, but confirmed he has been reprimanded twice during the past two seasons of the cop dramedy. Uh, he says the first reprimand was because I reacted with anger over working conditions that did not feel safe or conducive to work to good work under the leadership of a guest director and assistant director who in turn were angry at my response. I met with human resources. I apologize for my part of the conflict and I completed studio appointed therapy in October. I even shared a sizable portion of my paycheck with one of the parties involved per the instruction of the studio. The second recommend happened just a few weeks ago during an episode I was directing. An actor on set felt unsafe because a piece of shrapnel from an effect hit him. It was an unfortunate event that happened in spite of all precautions and procedures being followed. I take responsibility for that incident because I was in charge of the set. Crawford praised all of his collaborators and insists he would never intentionally jeopardize so many jobs. He says, I'm incredibly sorry if my passion for doing good work has ever made anyone feel less than comfortable on set or feel less than celebrated for their efforts. Furthermore, I apologize to all the crews and cast for any negative attention Lethal Weapon is receiving because of these incidents. Actors Cheetah Rivera and composer-producer Andrew Lloyd Webber have been named the 2018 recipients of the Special Tony Awards for Lifetime Achievement in the Theater. The honors were to be bestowed at the 72nd Annual Tony Awards Ceremony June 10th at New York City's Radio City Music Hall. The Tony Gala celebrates excellence on Broadway. Josh Groban and Sarah Burrells are hosting this year's event, which will air live on CBS. 
Nominations in competitive categories are to be announced May 1st. Heather Hitchens, the President and Chief Executive Officer of the American Theatre Wing in Charlotte St. Martin, the President of the Broadway League, said in a joint statement, the cultural impact that Cheetah and Andrew have had on the international theatre community and on theatre education has been immeasurable. They are groundbreakers, they are inspirations, and we are truly honored to recognize these two incredible legends with the Tony Awards for Lifetime Achievement. Rivera said her interest in performing began at a young age when she trained ballet in Washington, D.C. Uh, she said, when I came to New York and auditioned for George Balanchi, who gave me a scholarship to the School of American Ballet, I could have never imagined the amazing journey I've had in the theater. I would not trade my life in the theater for anything as the theater is life. I'm deeply honored to be recognized with the Special Tony Award for Lifetime Achievement in the theater this year. Weber said, I'm completely overwhelmed as a Brit to be honored by the Broadway community at the Tonys, particularly at the time when musicals are flying higher in their spiritual home, New York, than they've had for two generations. Richard Gere and Alejandro Silva married this month at a secret ceremony. Ola Magazine reported the 68-year-old American actor and the 35-year-old Spanish activist quietly tied the knot at a civil ceremony in early April. The couple plans to celebrate with family and friends May 6th in New York. Gere said, I have found the quiet and happy life that I've always sought. People confirmed the news Monday with the source saying Gear and Silva married weeks ago. The insider says they're extraordinarily happy. They're so comfortable with each other, having fun, and are looking forward to their future together. Gear and Silva were first linked in mid-2015. Gear was previously married to Cindy Crawford and Carrie Lowell and share 18-year-old son Homer with Lowell. Silva is parent to 5-year-old son Albert with ex-husband Govin Fernland. Uh, she captioned a picture on Instagram of Gear and Albert in March, following the path, hashtag together with my two boys, hashtag Albertino, hashtag Richard Gear. Kim Johnson is a mom of twins. The 41-year-old Australian dancer announced the birth of her little angels with husband and former Dancing with the Stars partner Robert Herjavec in an Instagram post Monday. Johnson shared a photo of Herjavec holding their twins, but have yet to announce the sex and names. She captioned the picture, I never thought my heart could feel so full. We're so in love with our little angels born at 7.44 a.m. and 7.45 a.m., April 23, 2018. Johnson and her Javik married in July 2016 after meeting on Dancing with the Stars season 20. Johnson announced her pregnancy in December and confirmed the same month that she was expecting twins. She told People, we waited so long that we decided to double up. We are grateful for the blessing of twins. Her Javik is already parents to three children, Brendan, Skye, and Caprice, with, ex, with his ex-wife. Johnson recently told People the 55-year-old television personality was, quote, so excited to be a father again. The star says he'll be really hands-on and he's going to be great. He's going to be such a good dad. He's already talking to them and telling stories. She added, I don't know how we're going to juggle the two, but we're just going to go with the flow of it. I'm trying to be prepared, but I think you just have to wait and see. Scarlett Johansson and Colin Joss made their first red carpet appearance together Monday. The 33-year-old actress and the 35-year-old writer and comedian attended the Los Angeles premiere of Johansson's movie Avengers Infinity War at El Capitan Theater in Hollywood. Uh, Johansson turned heads in a metallic embellished dress and a belted waist and sweetheart neckline. The star was all smiles as she posed for, uh, for photos with Joss, a writer and performer on Saturday Night Live. A source told us weekly, their eyes lit up when they looked at each other. Johansson plays Black Widow in Avengers Infinity War, which opens in theaters on Friday. The movie co-stars Robert Downey Jr., Chris Hemsworth, and Mark Ruffalo, who were also attendants in the premiere. Musician Bob Duro, who contributed to the creation of Schoolhouse Rock, died in Mount Bethnal, Pennsylvania, as family announced. He was 94. Duro's granddaughter, Kareen Wolf, said he was diagnosed with cancer last year, but didn't disclose the exact cause of his death on Monday, CNN reported. A jazz pianist and vocalist, Duro is best known for writing Three's a Magic Number, the song which spawned the educational music cartoon series Schoolhouse Rock. Duro was 94. Christina Aguilera rode with Late Late Show host James Corden in the latest edition of Carpool Karaoke. Aguilera performed some of her biggest hits during the trip, including Fighter, Dirty, Genie in a Bottle, and Beautiful. The late night host also asked Aguilera about her time on the Mickey Mouse Club, which starred other celebrities in their youth, including Justin Timberlake, Britney Spears, and Ryan Gosling. Corden asked, Could you find yourself getting lost in Ryan Gosling's eyes? Aguilera replied, I think... 
there were crushes, but I wasn't on the train before saying Gosling had a crush on Spears at the time. According to the joke, she must be regretting that. As the pair performed Dirty, actress Melissa McCarthy appeared in the backseat of the car for a rendition of rapper Redman's verse on the track. McCarthy was on hand to promote her upcoming film, Life of the Party, which also stars Aguilera. Aguilera then gave singing lessons to Corden and McCarthy before signing off with a beautiful uh, with the performance of Beautiful. Aguilera was recently in the news for posting on social media makeup-free photos of herself getting a new piercing at Body Electric Tattoo in Los Angeles. Janelle Monet has announced a North American tour in support of her first new album in five years called Dirty Computer. The tour is set to begin June 11th at Kings County Mayor Park in Seattle before wrapping up August 4th at the Tabernacle Performing Arts Theater in Atlanta. The singer will also be making stops in cities such as Los Angeles, Denver, Chicago, Detroit, Nashville, New York, Boston, and Miami, among others. It will go on sale for the general public on May 2nd through Live Nation. Monet said on Instagram that a pre-sale will begin on Wednesday at 10 a.m. local time. She continued, I'm excited to announce the hashtag Dirty Computer is going on tour. Every online ticket purchase includes a digital copy of my new album, Hashtag Dirty Computer, out everywhere Friday. More to more tour dates to come. Monet also released a new music video Monday for a song I like that, which will appear on her new album. The clip features multiple clones of Monet performing inside of an auditorium before she sings inside a white bathtub. Video for I Like That follows the release of visuals for other dirty computer singles, Make Me Feel, Diangle Jane, and Pink. The 2018 Billboard Music Awards will feature performances from Camila Cabello and Shawn Mendes. Billboard announced in a press release Monday that Cabello, Mendes, and Dua Lipa will take the stage at the awards show May 20th in Las Vegas. Cabello is nominated for four awards, including Top New Artist and Top Female Artist. She confirmed news of her performance in a tweet on Monday. The 2018 Billboard Music Awards will air at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on NBC. The event will mark Lipa's first appearance at the Billboard Music Awards and her first performance at an award show in the U.S. South Korean boy band BTS will also perform at the 2018 ceremony. Billboard said Tuesday that the K-pop group will perform a new single at the award show. Selena Gomez is changing up her look with an undercut. The 25-year-old singer and actress showed off her freshly shaved hairstyle Monday on Instagram following a visit to Puma headquarters in Germany. Photo shows Gomez had a small triangle-shaped pair, patch of hair buzzed off at the nape of her neck. She highlighted her new look by wearing her hair in a high ponytail. The star captioned a slideshow of pictures, always need a subtle change. At Puma, German family time, grateful for the welcome. Gomez is styled uh, Tim Duenas told Page Six it took about 10 minutes to create the singer's new look. He recounted, I asked her, well, how long have you been debating it? And she said since last night. She was like, when I wanted to go for something, I do it. I think she just wanted to change. Gomez stopped by Puma headquarters Monday. Her Puma Phenom Lux shoe collaboration with the brand launched April 6th and has since sold out. The star wrote Sunday, decided to come to Germany to meet my at Puma family and thank them and thank you for my first shoe collab being sold out. Also, for every shoe you bought, you gave to the Lupus Alliance Foundation a donation. And now let's take a look at what happened on this date in entertainment history. On this date in 1995, Ginger Rogers, best known for the 10th film she made with her dance partner, Fred Astaire, dies at the age of 83. Born in Missouri, Rogers began taking dance and singing lessons as a toddler. By age 5, she was appearing in commercials. At age 15, she won a Charleston dance contest and soon after began touring in the southern and midwestern vaudeville circuit with her act, Ginger and the Redheads. Her mother, Leela, a reporter and writer, worked as Ginger's manager and traveled with her as a chaperone. She and Ginger's father had divorced shortly after Ginger was born, and Leah would continue to manage her daughter's career until her death in 1971. After making a splash on Broadway in George Gershwin's hit play, Girl Crazy, Rogers signed a film contract in 1931. She would play a series of wisecracking blondes in a number of B-movies, working at various studios before settling at RKO. In 1933, she was paired with Fred Astaire and flying down to Rio. Although she lacked formal ballroom training, she and Astaire made a perfect match on the dance floor. 
Audiences flocked to the 10 movies they made together, including The, Day, uh, the Gay Divorcee in 1933, Top Hat 1935, Swing Time 1936, and Shall We Dance 1937. Apart from her graceful dance moves, Rogers also established her credentials as a serious actress with her performance in the 1940 film Kitty Flow, for which she won an Academy Award for Best Actress. According to an obituary published in the New York Times, Rogers was the highest paid woman in America by 1941, earning $355,000 per year. In addition to a hilltop mansion in Beverly Hills, she also bought a ranch on Oregon's Rogue River, where she spent as much of her free time as possible. Married and divorced five times, Rogers had no children. She continued to perform into the mid-1960s, scoring triumphs on Broadway in Hello Dolly in 1965 and in London with with Mommy. In 1969, Rogers made her final film appearance in 1965 when she played the mother of the actress Jean Harlow in the biopic Harlow. And that is your entertainment report for Wednesday, April 25th, 2018. I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back tomorrow to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Facebook.com slash The Entertainment Report with Ray Mello. That's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O. On Twitter at The Enter Report or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of The Entertainment Report anytime you want on iTunes iHeartRadio, just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Good night, and God bless you all.